Okay, collectors, uh, here we are again, and uh, you'll notice that the uh, the screen's a little more crowded this time. Instead of just me, uh, we have a delightful couple here. Uh, I want to introduce these people. Uh, this is Barry, and this is Michelle Smith, and uh, I think I know you, Barry, for how long? Since probably 1975. Yeah, we go so back to the old uh, green belt and shows. 48 and all years that. now. Yeah. Yeah. And Michelle, I don't know you that long. Um, probably at least 10 years. 10 years, Maybe 15. Yeah. I think we used to meet at that great restaurant in uh, Louisville. Oh, yeah, Remember so that? Yeah, Jeff Ruby's. Yeah. Jeff Ruby's. You turned us on to Oh, it was yeah. the most wonderful restaurant I ever ate in. But then again, the prices got so expensive, I even I couldn't afford to go there anymore. <laughs> so it just. But the. Uh, Barry is here with Michelle uh, today. It's a Sunday, and um, we're having a little libation here. It's um, it's too early, of course, uh, but I want to drink a toast to Barry and Michelle. And thank you so much Thanks for, for coming up to visit me. Uh, it's Glad always a pleasure, us. you know. Uh, I can't get uh, in on this. <laughs> well, uh, Hobbs over there, and Hobbs got his own drink. There you go. Thanks, there, uh, nobody ever sees Hobbs on the camera. So. I don't know if that's a good yeah. thing or not. Yeah, it's well, it's a know, good thing. The nice thing I like about it is that uh, these fine people got here at uh, 11 o'clock this morning, and even then it was not too early to have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> so by this time, boy, well, you're getting the worst of us, I guess. But, uh, but anyhow, um, um, Barry wanted to see um, some of my collection. They wanted to see the house and so forth, and uh, we did all that. And uh, I think we enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, I've it been threatening fun. to come here for I don't know how long, yeah. 20 years or so. Finally, yeah, your, I your, your brother was here 15 or 20 right. years ago, yeah. and you've been saying ever since you're coming, and never have. So well, but, here we are. Hey, my mom's here too. Jump up here, real come quick. Come on, Virginia, say hi. <laughs> Come on, Mom. <laughs> this is a lovely lady. I, I love this lady. 84. How many, how Hi, many, everybody. How many ladies at 84 would attend all these shows? That's right. You, and you do, don't you? I need credit, don't I? <laughs> you need a lot of credit. Thank you. Let me slip a thousand to you or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's your mom? Oh, I thought that, that, that was your sister. <laughs> and somebody's going to be having a birthday next month, I hear. And he's uh, right yeah. here. <laughs> Not worth mentioning. It's uh, too many years. Too many years. But anyhow, we're going to, we just thought we would make this little video here because the time is ripe. And uh, Barry brought some stuff up here. And uh, we'll take a look at it. And uh, maybe it'll be fun. I hope it will be. I hope it's all real. Oh, I hope so too. I know you a long time. I'm sure it's all real. I like the bag. That looks like one of my bags. Is it? Where the hell did you get that? Is it really? Yeah. Well, there's four SS daggers in here. Oh, and collectors, you love SS daggers. Can I bring them out? Go ahead. First cheers. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah, I made that a little stronger than I should have, I guess. <laughs> so what? Okay, it's Sunday, you know. Well, we'll start from this end. Is that okay? Yeah. Is this the worst to the best? No, or the... start over here. Okay, this mm -hmm. is the worst to the best. Mm -hmm. Okay. If there is you a worst to the best. All right. Well, let's see what we got here. Wow, look at this, collectors. This is really a, um, a pretty, 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 pretty um, SS dagger. Uh, the paint on the scabbard is um, is really great. It's got a nice um, a nice hanger, uh, which has a um, an RZM mark on the back, and a um, beautiful runes button. Nice nickel eagle. And let's see what we got here. There's the fittings appear to be all nickel. So maybe it's a, a Maker Mark one or an early RZM. Let's see what we got here. Whoa, nice blade. Got a couple of spotches, but not bad. Nice motto. And we'll uh, we'll look and see who the maker is, and that'll tell us a lot. Uh, okay, um, uh, this is a 121.34. Uh, 
this is a maker that um, uh, we don't see that um, that often, uh, but there is a um, a problem with this dagger. Uh, you collectors may have uh, noticed, and um, uh, unfortunately, we do have um, difficulty here. Uh, when we see the um, uh, the 120. Uh, 34 um, it should be opposite from this pointing towards the blade not pointing towards the hilt uh, so we have reason to believe that the um, the blade may be a reproduction even though the rest of the piece is uh, mm -hmm. is nice uh, you mean so pointing to the tip pointing uh, towards the tip yeah, yeah. Um, Unfortunately, uh, these blades have been um, reproduced over the years, and uh, uh, apparently somebody hornswangled you on this one. But uh, well, it was an older collector. He yeah. was a friend of ours, and he died yeah. what a couple years ago. Yeah, and he didn't really know what he was buying. He had a lot of money, yeah. and uh, this was in that collection. Well, the um, the mounts are all original. The grips original. The these are all the mounts you would want to see in this mm -hmm. dagger, but the blade is a is a reproduction. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's good to know. Yeah, it's not good to know. <laughs> it's not good to know. Uh, and I, you know, I, here we are. We're trying to be nice to this people, and right away I'm like, oh, God, what, what am I doing here? I, maybe we should stop this man. No, no. Well, that, that one will be for sale then. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, these are the things that we see. Uh, Barry's been around a long time, but his specialty is helmets. Is that mm, correct? Uh, hel helmets and yeah. soul books. Yeah, soul Fair books. Are, yeah. Yeah. So sometimes, as I keep telling you guys, um, these daggers are... Um, uh, it's a lot of tricks with them, and uh, over the years now... Uh, Dagger collecting has been around a long time, and uh, uh, some of these guys, uh, well, they do what they do. I, I, I don't know why they do it, but they do it. So, that's a shame. Yeah. Because I thought that but was going to be a really nice dagger. That collection's already paid for, so oh, we'll, okay. we'll sell that. Oh, okay. We're fine with that. Yeah. All right, well, that's one good thing, but you still have a loss in your bank account there. <laughs> Let's see what we got next here. Oh, this is another lovely dagger. Did this, did this collector clean everything? Did he? I really don't know. Because these, uh, the these daggers are the all... Uh, was when we bought it, but that's from the same collection. Oh, uh, this, this looks nice, too. The, um, uh, the fittings are, are really nice for the... A painted scabbard, a good RZM hanger, and uh, I'm not going to read your tags. I'd rather go by what I... Mm -hmm. Nice SS grip button, nickel eagle. Well, let's see what we got here, guys. Wow, that looks like a terrific blade. Uh, very, very nice motto, and uh, really, really uh, a fine piece. Let's see what we got on the other side. Okay, this is a, um, I think it's 1198, 38SS. This is a, um, I think that's WKC, if I'm not, uh, do you, did you look it up? I, SMF. SMF, is it what it that's drives what out to? Yeah. There, so. Okay, that, that you may be right on that. Uh, but this is 100%, this piece. This is a right, very, one very, for one. One, one for, for two. They're one, one for two, two yeah. Yeah. I told you. Keep, keep the numbers correct, <laughs> Michelle. We're, 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 we're drinking. We don't know what to But this is, a, this is really a lovely piece. The, um, uh, the cross guards are all plated, and um, I suspect the scabbard is too. I, I should have brought a magnet out here, but it looks like they are, and the paint is really nice. One little ding there, but that's nothing. So, um, you sure about that RZM? I've never heard of an SMF SS. It's a rare, it's a rare mark. Uh, this is okay. I can see it's okay. It's I didn't fine. say it wasn't okay. I'm just wondering. About no, it's a rare, that's a rare mark. You're right, Ob. Okay, so that, that's a good one. Good. 
Let's see what else we got here, Barry. <laughs> Are you trying to test me, or what are you trying to do to me? I don't understand what's going on. I need another sip. I hope you collectors have a drink with me during these videos, because sometimes you need it. That's right. You know, because you don't know what's going to happen, and how you're going to take it, so at least a little buffer. All right, so Actually, that's going. the main reason we came here. <laughs> to drink. We're drinking? <laughs> drink with you guys. <laughs> well, I really appreciate it. So, a lot of Sundays, you know, uh, all there is to do is watch some sports thing that we don't know. We don't know anything about sports and collecting. Uh, you know, the, uh, the Super Bowl's on and the phone rings. Do you have number so and so? And I told you, why, why don't you want the whole world's watching the Super Bowl when you're, you know, talking Nazi stuff? Yeah, it's the way it is. It's the way it is. Super Bowl is that made by Olic? <laughs> yeah. yeah, the bowl's made by Olic. Well, what I see here, I know what this is already. Uh, You'll notice right off the bat, collectors, it's, it, it's got an aluminum eagle and it's way too high in the grip. However, you'll also notice that these cross guards are fatter than usual. Uh, and that is because there was one maker that made cross guards out of steel and chrome plated them. And that was the Helbig firm. Uh, and when they did that, uh, the way they put their eagle in was also a little bit too high, but uh, that looks original to me. Beautiful scabbard. See how the uh, scabbard fittings are also chrome plated to match the, uh, the hilt. Nice SS button. See how fat that lower, lower grip is? So we'll take a look at this and uh, usually the Helbig etches are not very nice. They're not deep, or, but we'll see what this one looks like. Oh, yeah, here we go. It's, it's, uh, that's a decent etch. Not bad at all. Beautiful blade. Yeah, that looks, looks good. And... Um, Boy, I can't believe it. It's marked Helbig. How do I know these Man, things? I you're just, clairvoyant. I'm clairvoyant. So this this dagger, you may you guys may be saying, oh, I never saw a dagger with uh, steel fittings and chrome plating, but this is absolutely 100% original and just the way it should be, uh, which is amazing uh, that the Helbig trademark was on there too. So I was right. So I'm glad about that. I always like to be right. <laughs> now this is a nice dagger. Good. Beautiful dagger. Yeah, double, and and for guys, nice. for you yeah. guys that um, that are collecting SS types, uh, this is a very difficult dagger to find. They didn't make very many of them. They were made very late, and so uh, so that was a that was a good buy. Uh, people. People didn't used to buy these because they didn't think they were real, but now we know that they're real. Uh, the market is much better on them. All right, a number four here. Let's see. Uh oh. Oh, dum da dum dum. Yeah, this came from another collection. Yeah, different collection. Yeah. It's not this well I can see because the guy didn't shine the fittings no. all up. Yeah. Is that yeah. Well, collectors, um, who doesn't like to see a, a chained SS dagger, huh? Looks pretty good. It's multi-talented. Mm. These, uh, got to keep lighting these to no believes. I'm sorry. Uh, we don't want a dagger that doesn't have smoke on it. <laughs> well, what we're looking at here, the fittings are plated. Nice grip and so forth. Nice knot. Um, it's a later piece. We know that by the fact that the uh, the rims on the center ramp are not as crisp as the earlier ones. And what we see on a lot of these later daggers with anodized scabbards, which this one has, they put two screws in the uh, in the ramp. Not always, but on most of them, you see that. And the anodizing is really really nice on this piece. And the uh, scabbard fittings are all nickel plated too. Look how nice that anodizing is. Very, very good. 
and the, and the cross guards are good too. Let's see what this baby looks like. Oh, well, we ought to look at the chain first. Don't want to look at your description. We'll look at the chain first. Okay. This is nice, collectors. We have a what we call a Type 1 chain. See the uh, links up here are straight up and down, not tapered in like the Type 2. And then if the camera can go in here, the clover leaf is, is um, hollow at the top. And you'll see the DRGM in there, which was the mark that was put on the uh, snap clip below. And since the clover leaf was just soldered to that, you'll see that DRGM in there. I hope. I can't see because I drank too much, but it, it's probably there. I don't think it's there, Pop. It's not there, Pop? <clears throat> no. Uh, Robbie <laughs> said it's not there. Well, usually it is. Sometimes it's not. Nice belt loop. It's nice to have it. Let's see what the... Oh, good blade. Mm. Look at that deep motto. That's really a nice blade. And it's unmarked as we want to see them. Uh, this um, chain SS is 100%. 100%. Good to know. If there's no DRGM in here, uh, that just means they used a clip from another maker, and that's how it is. But uh, I don't have a loop with me, but if Bob says there's nothing in there, I guess there isn't. But uh, And where would it be on it would be inside the top? Inside right. of the top clover leaf. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I'm not seeing it either. No, I don't think it's there. Not just patina or over it's it? Or it's worn out. Or, yeah, patina over it. Well, if it's not there, it's not there, that's all. Uh, it's still a, um, a super dagger. I always wondered why that DRGM was in there. And you said they, they, the, the clip was made first, and then the clover leaf was made, and they just transposed well, all on top um, of each other. When you have these kind of daggers, um, on the, the type 1 chain and the upper scabbard and the center scabbard all came as a unit and it was shipped to the manufacturer and the manufacturer installed it as is and normally uh, the clip that they used to make these was a DRGM mark clip but all clips are not DRGM mark so this one happened to escape that process Although, I'll bet if we wipe some of that patina off, we might find the DRGM, but either way, it doesn't matter. It's a, uh, it's a nice dagger, nice knot, beautiful blade. I mean, that's something that a, a collector can buy and put his on his wall and enjoy it for a lifetime. I mean, it just, how can, you not, uh, how can you not smile looking at that, you yeah, know, I mean, they just, uh, it's a beautiful piece. Um, it's probably the vintage is probably about 1938, 39, something mm -hmm. like that. And if the um, if the knot's original to it, it was worn by a Waffen SS guy. Mm. As you collectors, I think you know, only the Waffen SS guys were permitted to wear the portable. Portable didn't know the uh, the general SS no mm -hmm. didn't wear it. So there you go. Well, that's All right. some. Uh, so some pretty good stuff. We had uh, we had three winners and one not so much a winner, but uh, <laughs> winner. that's not yeah, bad. Uh, you did good there, Val. All right. Well, thanks a lot. Congratulations Tom. on them. You want to see one more SS dagger? Sure. Hey, collectors, we always want to see one more SS, don't we? No. This came from my friend Rudy Donish from Berlin. You probably knew him at one time. He was about six foot three. He died, unfortunately, about, uh, I don't know, 18 or 19 years ago. Oh, really? And fortunately, I got first shot at his collection. And after after he passed? Yeah. Or after, recently? After, after he after, passed? Yeah, about so 18, 19 years ago. And his brother was good enough to sell, give me first shot at the collection. But the only thing I didn't have enough of was money mm. when I went over there. He had a really, really incredible collection. Well, got, that's always the problem. You right. Know? Yeah. I mean, how much money does anybody have, uh, you know? Some guys, you got a thousand bucks, and uh, you're going to buy a nice SA, or, uh, and all of a sudden a, uh, a fifteen hundred dollar piece comes along, and oh, uh, my wife wants to do, uh, the kids need, uh, yeah, and yeah. you got to, got to, you know, fifty fifty treatment yeah. with this. That's stuff, why I never know? got married, Tom. <laughs> 
Michelle I tried I could, it one time. I was going to say, I wish I could say it, but I don't want to say it. Right? This came from uh, my friend Rudy Donish. Again, I've had this for 20 years, and I don't know how long Rudy had it. Um, but what's really interesting about this piece is that this soldier was killed in 1940. It's a numbered dagger. Mm. If you want to yank it out of I love numbered daggers. Was he an officer, I guess? Uh, uh, just an enlisted man, Rolf well, Fuhrer, which is a corporal. Look at, look at the dossier. It's 100 pages here. Boy, this is going to be interesting, collectors. Well, let's see what we got here. Let's look at the uh, the dagger first. Beautiful um, early piece. Look at the cross guards and look at the beautiful scabbard. The anodizing is still all there. A lot of the um, the lacquer is still there. It's got a group of mark um, district mark one on the cross guard. Really, really nice, um, nice uh, piece on the outside. The runes button is really good. It's placed about seven o'clock or so. You know, I might mention that too while we're on it. You know, everybody asks, well, why isn't the SS button straight up and down on these early daggers? And if you think about it, the dagger was worn from this position, so why not turn the SS so it's straight up and down when it's in that position? Sure. So that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's why it was. At least that's what I believe, anyhow. Um, Boy, what a nice piece. Oh, early, 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 all the way through. Oh, wonderful blade collectors. Look at that, uh, look at that SS motto. Uh, all of the uh, blackening is in the backgrounds. It's really, really nice. Really nice. Yeah, Let's see who good. made it. Oh, our favorite maker, Mr. Boker, Herr Boker, Carl Boker of Zoligan. Uh, this one has the second type of uh, cross guards on it. I've told you in the past that Boker used two types of cross guards. This is the second type. So that's really nice. And then, uh, whoa, here we go, guys. Can you catch that uh, number stamped in there? Turn it back towards you a little bit, Pop. Here. here. What do you want me to do, Bob? Uh, just right, give it to me. Okay. <laughs> just give it to you. That's all right. yeah, I'll take care of it. Yeah, let me handle it. Seven Get three five four four. Let me see those numbers again. Uh, yeah, what we see on these most of the time, collectors, <clears throat> they were all individually die stamped. I mean, they they probably had one guy in the unit that took care of the toilets or took care of the horses or something. And okay, put my serial number in here. Uh, this was only early on when they did that for the most part, and this guy just dies. I stamped them in there, and that's what we like to see. Uh, I find it interesting that the the die stamping is usually on the under part of the cross guard on the back side, mm -hmm. uh, not the front side. I don't know why, but they they usually are. Probably because he was told to stamp it on that side. Stamp it on the side that has a district number. Okay, I'll do that. So that's a uh, that's a wonderful. Uh, he had a really interesting story about him. Uh, his name was Hermann Prince, and he was in uh, the Algemeine SS, and that's obviously when he got this dagger. Well, he was a Rotenfuhrer then. He wasn't an officer. Right. That's great mm -hmm. that you were able to get this documentation. Wow. And there's a picture of him. He looks like kind of a mean dude. No. But I'm sure he was a nice man. That's all true. SS yeah. guys yeah. were nice men. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look at that. His wife. His wife's not too bad. What, what do you think, Al? I think it, he, she looks like him. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's the sad part. Yeah. He got called up in the Army, not the SS, in 1940, and he served on the Western Front. And well, he was an Algemein SS guy, so he wasn't in the Waffen SS, so he was uh, subject to that. To that, the draft, that happened. right. Yeah. Well, just before uh, he was called up, his wife had a daughter, and unfortunately, the, the mother died in child, childbirth. Oh. And so, can you imagine? He oh. went to the front and had to deal with that. Yeah. And then no he, fun. he was only there for a short period of time, and guess what happened to him? He was killed. Oh. 
And when was he killed? What year do you know offhand? 1940. Oh, Let's right see. after the war started. Uh, yeah, he was actually with a observation battery. Uh -huh. And he was a Wachtmeister, which is a, at that time, yeah. that's a, like the rank of a sergeant. Yeah. And I'm trying to see here if I can find Looks his like cause a, of death. Um, so he was killed uh, um, uh, August 18th, 1940. No, actually, yeah. no, no thir 13 December, December of 39. 30, yeah, so yeah. I, oh, I, no, I to, no, no, that can't be a type of... Yeah, 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 yeah date of his death. The, that's yeah, right. That's he was it, yeah. killed before. I think they were taking pot shots back and forth on the Western Front. So this is even before the Germans went into oh. uh, France. Well, that's that's a shame. Uh, and then, uh, but boy, what a dossier! That's his grave. His grave. Yeah. Wow, isn't that amazing that uh, somebody who did this uh, work? Uh, Rob McDivitt or uh, um, Ross Ross Kilbell? Uh, yeah, Ross Kilbell. Yeah. 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 Well, that's amazing. And you might ask, what happened to the daughter? Mm -hmm. Well, she obviously was given to a foster family, and she became an airline stewardess for <laughs> for Lufthansa. No, Argentinian <laughs> Airlines. Oh, well, that was a good so, place yeah. to go to get out of so, Nazi Germany. Yeah. A lot uh -huh. of Germans down there. Yeah. Maybe she brought Eichmann over. <laughs> yeah. uh, she probably got out of there just to. <laughs> Save her neck, which I don't blame her. Well, that that makes for a really an interesting uh, thing here, and we'll put the dagger back. And uh, we should mention too that um, there's a fantastic early SS vertical hanger. I must have 30 guys that want to buy early SS vertical hangers, and they're just not available anymore. You want to sell that for a hundred bucks? Yeah, I knew you would, yeah. Add a zero, I don't think about Add a zero. Okay, uh, we have a, a special piece according to Michelle. Uh, we'll see how it looks. And what do we got there? Well, back in the 80s, I worked at the welfare office and I hated every minute of it. It was mm -hmm. awful. I worked there for two years. Yep. And about two years ago, my former bosses wife walked in. Her father was in, uh, no, actually he wasn't in World War II. Uh, her uncle was in World War II. And he shipped home a dagger to her father. And uh, here it is. And he kept it. And she brought it into her shop. And I couldn't believe what I saw. The original mailing original box. Original mailing box. <laughs> Look at that, guys. Wow. Well, it's got his, uh, his name and outfit and all on there. Yeah, so this is the brother yeah. who was in the service, and he sent it home to... Yeah. And look at that, collectors. It cost a whole 11 cents <laughs> to mail the dime. Can you imagine that? Bridgeton, too. Hmm. Yeah, Bridgeton. What's it say? Ob here, contents, one, one German. German saber. <laughs> is that a saber? It looks a little shorter. <laughs> okay, we'll take it at face value. Oh, boy. And... Uh, Wow, I'm just looking at this. I'm I'm not sure how to take it out of the box. I don't want to disrupt anything. Boy, there's the um, that looks like the original yeah, packing <laughs> paper. That's the original tissue and all, isn't it, Barry? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. There you go, collectors. Wow. We're looking at a um, a late SA with the original um, issue tag, the original hanger on it. Hanger's mint. Yeah, with a late RZM on it. The uh, paint on the scabbard is mint. And uh, look at the condition of that issue tag. Wow, it's beautiful. And it's got a run number on the back of it. Doesn't have the RZM number of the dagger, but you can still see that um, it's original, riveted right to the handle. Wow, beautiful thing here. Oh. Totally brand new blade in perfect condition. Doesn't get any better than this, Barry. Really, really nice. And uh, let's see if there's RZM M74038. So it was made in 1938. Uh, offhand, I don't know who 740 is. I'll have to look them up unless you have it here. 
Hortkoff. Uh, that's yeah. the guys with the uh, devil's hand, yeah, I, I like think. That one. Uh, yeah. yeah, like Hortkoff. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's. Uh, I like the hanger, too. The, look at the leather on the hanger, how rich that still is. Yeah, it's almost like patent leather. Yeah, it's really, really beautiful. And uh, this type of clip was the style with it, that kind of a, a, a lousy nickel plating, and it usually is all faded, but that's still in its original mint shape. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's a fantastic, uh, fantastic piece. Well, collectors, it doesn't, uh, Aluminum Eagle doesn't get any better than that if you're, um, if you're collecting uh, tagged, uh, unissued daggers, and then you add together with it the original shipping carton. Uh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. Uh, you can be very proud of that one. Uh, I am. Uh, there'll be guys, uh, when the time comes, which I hope it's a long time from now, uh, they'll be standing in line for this one. Okay, guys, you and saw it here. you'll probably be right up front. <laughs> well, I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, let's mix it up a little bit. Well, yeah, this is the helmet we talked about upstairs. Okay. You have the duplicate of this helmet. So it's all in the. It really, it's uh, yeah. The fact, same. The same guy painted it. Yeah. Uh, uh, I even have a note this. here. It says. See Tom Whitman's Down the Cellar 13, <laughs> <laughs> back to work video. That's that was got the October same... the 18th of, well, geez, almost two years ago now. Wow. You're making right. these videos that long? I guess, so. wow, that you're right. Wow. That is the, uh, wow. Mine still has a liner and all in it too, so uh, look at that. Where's the uh, 112? What is it, an artillery group? Anti-aircraft artillery. Anti-aircraft artillery. Gun battalion. See, with all the guys' names on it. Louis, Constantine, Slim. I love the names these World War II guys had. Porky, Doc. <laughs> ah, just great. Look how they um, surrounded the uh, uh, Wehrmacht insignia with uh, some red paint. Yeah, this is a, uh, a terrific helmet. They put a few blasts around the uh, unit mark to look like it's exploding. I wonder, uh, Bear, since it says Reggie on the... Um, um, if that was... What do you, what do you call that? it? Do you think yeah. that could be the guy that painted it? I, I wonder. Does mine have that on it? I don't I know. I we should have brought it down to compare them. Yeah, we should have. Next visit. Yeah, where is that? Up, upstairs? It's upstairs, yeah. yeah. And see, Southern France, August 1944. I mean, it just doesn't get any uh, any better than this. All right, let me see the inside of it, Pop. See the inside? Yeah. I'm still looking at the great names. Ein L. Turk, and he spelled Ein wrong. <laughs> A I N. Uh, yeah. yeah, the inside is still perfect condition with the chin strap. Well, I like mine a lot, but yours might even be better. I don't yeah, know. I think Barry's got you beat on this one. You think so? Yeah. One uh, thing. <laughs> After 50 years, I find a beat on one thing. <laughs> Oh, that's a that's a wonderful, um, wonderful helmet. You know, um, what was happening here, guys? If you don't get the picture, uh, we have all these uh, troops going went through the whole war, and uh, don't they run into towards the end of the term a uh, an artist uh, that took it on himself that thought, oh, I can probably make a couple bucks with this, yeah. and I'll paint this stuff for one, and what's the name of the guys in your outfit, and uh, so he did that, um, so who, what GI wouldn't want to bring home something like this, um, uh, what an example of your memories and what happened, um, and the great part about all of this, it's all true.
it really happened. And these guys all existed. Right. Yeah. In that, mm -hmm. uh, and you can imagine uh, a helmet like this. Uh, a lot of World War II vets for years uh, had reunion parties. And I'm sure that this helmet was certainly at uh, yeah. uh, one of those reunions that everybody, uh, oh yeah, there's Porky on there. <laughs> yeah, that's remember, remember, remember that. That, yeah. Yeah. that poor son of a gun, he got killed in uh, Anzio or something. And, uh, you, can see, yeah. you can see the vet probably took care of it too, really. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. not, it doesn't even show yeah. the end. <clears throat> that's a killer. Yeah. That's an absolute yeah. killer. Amazing. I, like how he, I like how he camoed it too with the gray exactly. paint. You know? yeah. Yeah. The whole helmet is yeah. repainted first and then he's got little, little dabs camos, of gray yeah. paint in there and yeah. then he that's does the artwork. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's really a, a work it's, of art. It's, 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 it's an beautiful. M40 it's, yeah. helmet. Uh, there's the original color of it there. Mm -hmm. it looks uh, almost Luftwaffe, doesn't it? Well, it's, it may, yeah, it may have it's been definitely the, Army, though, yeah, because of the Army decal. See how he highlighted the decal, too? The yeah, with the, with the paint around it. Mm -hmm. You know, stuff like this is very, very hard to find. I mean, you just you'll look for years to ever see something like this. I mean, I, uh, I'm sure a certain number of them were made and all, but um, compared to the... Uh, Numbers of uh, GIs. I mean, this mm -hmm. is a uh, you know. Just Unfortunately, these are heavily faked too. So you got to be very, very careful when you buy right, these. There you oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You sure this one's right? It looks awful good. <laughs> <laughs> no, Poo-pooing right. my stuff. No, that's right. Nobody, nobody could make hey, you up brought those it up. names. <laughs> nobody could make up those names. Nobody can make up those names. Ein L. Turk with gonna, Ein spelled wrong. Right. I love that. I, that just is a. I'm going to pay Ob's. Yeah, I need Ob on there. Ob, yeah. there yeah. <laughs> Ob Whitman. No, that's that's great, Barry. I love it. Yeah, it's very. It's nice. a pretty big one too. Pretty yeah. good size. Yeah. See these. This is another end of collecting yeah. that you can yeah, get into. Pretty. Not that it's going to be easy, uh, but. You know, I always say, uh, collectors write me, well, what should I collect? And I always say, well, there's there's hundreds of different areas that you can collect. And uh, helmets like that are, are one of them, although you'll go crazy trying to find them. But what a great thing when you do. Mm. It's always a great thing to get a Denobly lit, too. Oh, my. Wow, look at this. Hmm. Well, look at this, collectors. Um, uh, this is an ultra, ultra rare item. Uh, this is a, um, a fighting knife, uh, but it has the, um, the built-in toolkit within the grip. Uh, just fantastic. Um, it's a boot knife, it, right? It's a boot knife, but, fighting knife, wow. yeah. Uh, and we virtually uh, never see these. Uh, they must have been expensive, I guess, to uh, to buy. I'm, I don't think something like this would have been issued. I think you would have had to buy it uh, because of the, um, the toolkit. But, I mean, I think uh, without pulling all this stuff out, I'll, I'll pull a couple out here. But, I mean, just look at that all, you know, just great. There's a bottle opener. Nobody would need that, I'm sure, in case you ran into a palace with all the wine still in there. And, and, uh, and there's all kinds of knives here, different sizes. Have you ever had one of these? Um, maybe one. I, yeah. I can't even remember how long ago it was. Mm -hmm. And this still remains in I've never seen condition. That uh, are there any maker marks on any of the blades? Do you remember? Or? I haven't looked at it in a yeah. while. Here's one that was in an auction, uh, I'm not sure how many years ago, let's see. But it was interesting because they estimated that it was worth between two and three hundred dollars. Oh, and it, and wow. It, and it sold for twenty one hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's how mm -hmm. stupid some of these auctioneers are. They think it's a, uh, a painting or something, or uh, I don't know, but... Yeah, it's... Um, see, they were it, supposedly issued to machine gun units. Well, that, yeah. that, that, that's a good guess. I yeah. mean, uh, it's possible. And it's known as the Patronenheber, MG34. Uh, 
Well, then, you you know, I just said that I thought they were all private purchase, yeah. but maybe if you were in a specialized machine gun unit, they felt yeah. that you needed this equipment. The blade, it's, this one was marked with an S, so let's see if that one has An S is usually an Army mark, mm. not Luftwaffe. Mm -hmm. So, um, needless to say, Bear, uh, something like this um, uh, would bring more than two or three hundred hours. Um, <laughs> In fact, uh, I'm sure there's many collectors that would virtually kill to get something like that. Uh, we just never see these, and uh, uh, did it come from a, uh, a good source? This and, came from my friend Rudy again in Germany uh, about the, the, 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's one you want to hang on to. Uh, that that's really. A, Let's uh, see the blade. Oh, I didn't even get to the blade. I was so excited about yeah, the how handle. About that, it is marked with the S. Let me see. Oh yeah, yeah. There you go. That's uh, that's an army uh, army marking. Not to mention it's mint. Yeah, the uh, wasn't sharpened up. Still has the grain even in it. Um, well, that's the kind of piece of I had it. Uh, it would never go anywhere. Uh, that's just really, uh, really tremendous. The blade is mint. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Boy, what an incredible yeah. artifact here. Wow. Well, Rudy only collected the best. Well, he had good taste, I'll tell you yes, that. Yes, he did. I love that. that that's um, absolutely fantastic. All right, we got a, two more things here we want to show you. I okay. think we really enjoy them. Let's do that first. That's last. And this collection. Isn't it nice collectors that uh, Barry comes over here and uh, Shows off some of the cool stuff that he's accumulated over the years. I mean, it's just just wonderful. What do we got here? A Johnson book? Yeah, I think you're really going to like this. We bought a collection about, what, two months ago now? Yeah, two months ago. And this was one of the highlights of it. Nine pieces of A -H Hitler formal. formal. Uh, uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine... Well, there's only about um, $20,000 there, so that's all, yeah. At but, today's prices, but it's still going to go up more. Well, what makes yeah. this grouping even better, first of all, these are the prices that he paid, uh, I think, back in the 90s. I'd have to look at this. Yeah, 500 but, bucks for the... Yeah, I used to sell the stuff then for that, that amount. That's about right. But what's really fantastic is that the wife of the veteran, wife and daughter of the veteran, actually sold these items to Thomas Johnson. Uh -huh. And fortunately, he featured them in his book. Oh, really? Uh, World War II German War Booty, Volume mm -hmm. 2. And what's great is the family still has the letters uh, of, from the, the father saying, where he got we these. Got, yeah. We know where these came from. These are absolutely from the Eagle's Nest. And Eagle's Nest or the Berghof? The, the Eagle's Nest. Nest. Eagle's yeah. Nest, okay. And here's a picture of oh, the there we go. Yeah, wife yeah. and daughter. That's great. Are all the pieces here? Nothing's no, just missing? some just some of them. Something's yeah. missing yeah. then. Yeah. Like these, I forget what these things are called. Yeah, the yeah. Um, <clears throat> aspect. That's aspect it. thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. I knew we needed you for yeah. something. <laughs> Yeah. Well, with uh, with some of these, the um, the demi toss fork is very difficult to find. Um, this is uh, the too. oyster yeah. oyster, oyster fork. fork. That, mm -hmm. uh, because you know, if they weren't serving oysters, they didn't need oyster forks, so they ordered less of those. So you'll see fewer. These are all the standard um, uh, table items. This is a salad knife. Uh, here's a demi demi toss snipe also. So some really um, really good stuff here. And here's all of Johnson's letters. Right. Uh, goes, uh, Isn't that so. great? Yeah, that's uh, that's a tremendous thing. Um, yeah, you did go uh, good with that one, Barry. I, I want to say too that um, you know Barry showed us the uh, the prices that the uh, original purchaser paid for these things in the uh, five to six hundred dollar mm -hmm. area and uh, uh, back early on uh, I think when I first discovered AH uh, silver 
Uh, I used to sell them for $200, $250, and, and then a couple years later they went to $300, and then they went to $400. And um, this stuff, um, uh, Brookman was the, um, the maker for these um, items, and uh, they were the, uh, the Reich Party silver, the official pattern for uh, Hitler. Um, and there were approximately um, 3,000 pieces made, and, and you say, well, gee, that sounds like um, quite a few pieces, but, you know, with the war and what went on, and uh, I once had a, I had um, six little handles that were cut off. All they had was the eagle and the swans. Mm -hmm. They were cut off the silverware. Uh, and they were, I found them, I was in the, in the Berghof in the, in the uh, early 80s and I went down into the garage and was digging around. Yeah, and, I bought one of your bricks. Well, yeah, that's where <laughs> they came from, one of the bricks. And there were, there were a, a number of pieces, there were some crazy GI uh, cut the eagle and swaz off and I guess he'd take the rest home and kind of try to use it like that, I don't know, but, uh, but over the years, um, uh, people that a lot of times have said, oh, that, that's Hitler formal wear. It's so expensive. I'm not going to buy that. Um, but it's going to continue to go up. Of the 3,000 pieces made, maybe 2,000 of them were left. Uh, who knows with the scourge of the war and all. But um, there isn't any more being made, at least originals. <laughs> Uh, so these kind of things, um, if you're looking for retirement or whatever, you you put your money in uh, in these accounts, and uh, like everybody else this year, I think I lost half of my money that was in that account. Um, that's never going to happen with things like this, and they're always a um, a fantastic investment, and they'll always be collectors for it. So uh, I think it's really good that you uh, bought these and saved them. Uh, yeah, in, in 49 uh, years of collecting, it's the first Hitler yeah. silverware we ever came across. I um, Have you ever eaten from a piece of this? I don't do that. <laughs> I, don't do that but, uh, I will say that I, I bought my um, first set of informal. Uh, in fact, um, let me just go get them. It'll just take a second. They're right here. Uh, I bought the first Hitler silverware I ever acquired um, in the 70s. And um, these are the pieces that I bought. Uh, and they're informal. You can see the difference between the formal where the um, eagle is much more int intricate and they have the uh, Greek chain link pattern around the handles. The informal we feel was probably used for breakfast or lunch, something like that. Uh, and I met a guy in a diner in Cherry Hill, this is a fact, probably about 1975, maybe before that even. And he says, I got this uh, Nazi silverware and uh, he says, I don't know what it is. I mean, it's got AH on it. It's probably the uh, Adolfo Hotel or something like mm -hmm. that. And I said, well, you might be right because I had never seen it before either. And uh, he, I said, you want to sell it? He said, yeah. I said, well, I don't, I don't know what to pay for it. I'm not sure it's real either. And he says, well, how about just buy it for the um, for the silver content? And I thought, well. <laughs> How the hell are you going to go wrong with that? Right. So I remember I, I gave him 20 bucks a piece for the, for the whole grouping, and uh, I took it home, and I thought, ah, what am I going to do with this stuff? I don't know whether it's real or not. And then as years went by, of course, we started to uh, see what was issued. So uh, I think it's kind of kind of cool. Yeah. Isn't it cool to see there's some informal, and there's the formal stuff. Um, I, I, in my opinion, there's uh, there's no better investment than these things, again, because it was a limited quantity. And uh, for a collector, uh, I know a lot of you guys are just interested in the military stuff, but who wouldn't want 
uh, something that comes directly out of the Berghof. Uh, who knows who ate from it, you know? Uh, I can just see, um, I can see Martin Borman with his fork digging, you know, bratwurst <laughs> or something, you know, whatever. Or even the Fuhrer himself, maybe, and the, from and the absolutely, possibility uh, exists. He was cutting one of his tomatoes because yeah. he didn't eat any meat or anything, but... But uh, I, I think that these are um, these are wonderful investments, and uh, uh, Barry, I'm, I'm glad to see that you got those, and uh, don't let anybody con you out of them because uh, they're uh, they're great, great, great things, and 100% uh, original. And uh, of course, if you want to sell them, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, that's some serious hardware there. <laughs> All right, collectors, uh, Barry and Michelle are. Are going to wrap this uh, this up now, and they have one more piece they want to show us. So if you're still with us. I think we want to look and see what it is. What do you got there, sir? Another SS dagger. Oh, not another. Who yeah. wants to see more SS? Oh, I know you guys do. Let's look at it. Now, uh, the same collector who had the Hitler silverware got this dagger along with two other daggers. I don't know what the other daggers were, but uh -huh. I think they were common daggers. Yeah. Uh, directly from a veteran back in 1979. That's the year I graduated from high school. Oh. And he, Geez, I graduated in 1961. <laughs> we must be a few years apart here. A little bit. A little bit, yeah. But you look better than I did. <laughs> yeah. You got more hair than I do. <laughs> uh, he got the three daggers from this veteran for three hundred dollars and that much right yeah in 79 and he couldn't believe his good fortune at the time so he wound up sending this dagger to thomas johnson and he gave it the thumbs up mm -hmm. and i have all the correspondence here from thomas johnson concerning the dagger right so well let's see things. let's see what uh, tom johnson uh, thought about this i hope he knew what he was doing i'm sure he did better. Yep. Well, we're looking good here, collectors. Uh, this is another Type 1 chain here. Um, this is an early piece as opposed to being a later piece. Um, the, uh, the cross guards are all nickel. And um, remember what I told you, collectors, the Upper scabbard fitting and the center ramp and the chain were made by a hardware producer and they were shipped to the manufacturers of the SS daggers. So a lot of collectors will say, well, oh, why do you have a nickel uh, cross guards and plated um, uh, upper fitting and center ramp? It's because this whole unit came as one and it was installed uh, because of the time period with early fittings. You have a beautiful grip here with a, a nickel eagle. This looks kind of beautiful too. <laughs> you always have to take a break, you know, guys. All right, you talk yeah. me into it. Oh, yeah. Now, what else we see here too, which is really kind of, um, uh, spectacular this early piece has an anodized scabbard it's really really nice um, with a type 1 chain and I'm going to say you can see the DRGM uh, through the clover leaf and Rob will say no we don't see it but uh, yes, there is time. it's on that one okay well that that takes a little bit away from my at least uh, sometimes I'm right and a beautiful chain. Uh, these Type 1 chains, Bear, uh, they have bigger skulls than the Type 2, and the, the teeth really are looking up at you, and yeah, it, it's kind of uh, scary, I guess. And let's see, if the, we have the Coulter Zeichen mark on the back. Yeah, there it is. On the Type 1 chains, too, also, the Kaiser Kaiser Zeichen mark. Too many, too many, too many drinks here. Uh, is stamped deeply stamped, whereas on the um, the Type Two chains, it's just kind of hit lightly. So that's what you want to see. That's exactly what you want to see. Uh, nice, um, nice belt loop. 
um, the center, the uh, lower mounts on uh, on these kind of daggers. Uh, sometimes you'll see nickel ones, and sometimes you'll see nickel plated ones. Uh, this one, this one appears to be a nickel one, which collectors will say, "Oh, how come that's nickel? And this is nickel. This is nickel, and these fittings are uh, are steel." Again, it's what I said. Uh, the upper unit was sent to the manufacturer. Now let's see what the the rest of this piece looks like. Oh my, yeah. Well, there you go, guys. It um, I don't think it gets any better than that. Uh, it's got a beautiful, um, beautiful motto on it. All the darkening in the background. Just really, really nice. Okay, and what we have here um, is really hard to um, to consume, uh, but it is a hundred percent original. A chained uh, Himmler. It's a chained Himmler dagger. Now remember the uh, the Himmler dagger was issued in 34. The chain dagger came out in 1936. This man said, well, I already have a Himmler dagger. Why should I buy another dagger? Yeah. I'll just buy the chain. And um, what I also will note too is that if you look at these cross guards and look at the accent grooves in the cross guard that is absolutely icorn all the way uh, just exactly like you want to see an icorn piece uh, and let's see whether there's anything uh, yeah here we go too um, with the uh, Himmler daggers uh, we'll often see an inspection number four on this one the inspection number can go from zero to nine so that's great to see. Let me see. Get that up. I think so. There All right, go. and um, and also with this one, um, uh, this is one of the first production Himmlers. We can tell that because the tail on the squirrel is the smooth tail. Uh, the later pieces will be serrated, and it's interesting too that um, the etch on the obverse of the blade differs slightly between the serrated tail and the smooth tail. So Icorn apparently had the second run of them made by another etching firm, mm -hmm. uh, but this one is um, uh, one of the initial production examples. And these uh, were issued to people who took part in the Night of the Long Knives, is that true? Um, that is certainly true, uh, but they were also issued to uh, other long-term uh, SS men that uh, Himmler considered uh, worthy of it. Uh, the old uh, uh, stuff where everybody, uh, in Tom Johnson's book, he says there were 200 of them made right. and all that. That's um, What do I you think, think the actual number is? Um, I would say uh, realistically about 2,500. Uh, and there are records, there's a letter which I have a copy of, where someone from an SS depot wrote to Himmler in 1941 and said we have about 700 of your Himmler inscribed mm. daggers what do you want us to do with them? And Himmler said, well, we'll wait till we win the war and then we'll decide what to do. Uh, well, we see a lot of Himmler daggers that are in stone mint condition mm -hmm. and we feel that that box of 700 that were left were probably the ones that were raided by GIs that brought home mm -hmm. these. In fact, I, I, I once bought three Himmler daggers from the same GI, all in mint condition, and two of them were in bags yet. So, uh, so there had to be. I it's my feeling about twenty five hundred. Where where are those? <laughs> They're all in collections. How many do you think you've had? Oh, I probably sold uh, 60, 75 that over many? Wow. the years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, some of them may have been the same dagger, mm -hmm. but uh, 
Uh, I, of course, I have one in my collection mm -hmm. that I love very much. And uh, now, um, can we turn this into a bit of the antiques roadshow? Would you be willing to tell me what that is valued at? Um, With Johnson. Well, Lennon this this uh, this Himmler dagger. Uh, the condition of the dagger itself is um, absolutely perfect. Uh, so uh, the dagger is um, is worth about 20k, um, and the scabbard is a beautiful type one in perfect condition. Um, I would say somewhere in the area of um, 25 plus. Um, because it just has everything. Mm -hmm. uh, some collectors will say, well, I don't want a Himmler unless it's in a Himmler, die, Himmler scabbard. Okay, I can understand that. I don't want a chained SS that has a Himmler dagger in it. Uh, but there are collectors that would love to have Yeah, and I know this that, came right from the veterans. It's too, not so the first time the we're seeing that. this. Either. No, I, we've, we've seen, seen this. We've seen yeah. these uh, mm -hmm. several times in the past. I mean, the, the dagger might be 25 to 30 is what the... Uh, what the piece would bring. And what is this uh, pocket watch? It's I weird. just picked that up in our shop about uh, a month ago, and I know you like that kind of jewelry, and I thought I'd bring it to show you. Mm -hmm. Shall we do a little shop plug here? Can we do that? Yes, please. So it has, um, uh, this This watch has nothing to do with the dagger then. No. Uh, but what a cool thing. It's got the iron, iron cross on it from the imperial period with a Cool eagle with all the arrows under him. This is kind of like a Prussian uh, uh, type eagle. It, uh, in fact, this is, is there are swaths in the eagle, no, but. Um, yeah, it's imperial for sure. It's imperial, yeah. Uh, let's see what we got here. How's this open, Bear? You don't know either. <laughs> The board had never looked at it. What is it with these guys? Yeah, 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 yeah. I will probably know how to open it. I, I really don't know how to open it. Okay, but anyhow, you can see the you can see the face of it is in great shape. Um, and let's it still see runs. If it, let's see if it still runs. Yep, there it goes. Never been repaired, right? Okay, Barry and Michelle, I'm running out of tape here, so let's we got to. Ah, there we go. Oh. I got it opened. See the uh, manufacturer and so forth. I was hoping there was a dedication or something yeah. inside, but uh, still a very nice watch. Uh, yeah, I like that. Uh, I'll give you a hundred bucks for that. <laughs> okay, right. well, I'll, I'll, I'll make it a hundred twenty. <laughs> All right, we're going to do a little plug for our shop down in Millville, sure, please. which is about 45 minutes uh, south of Tom and Ob. Uh, Millville is in New Jersey. <laughs> At least Mike Trout, any of you baseball be. fans out there, Mike yeah, Trout, Mike is, from Trout Mike, is from Millville. From Mike, I right. went to school with his dad. Uh, oh, yeah? So a big shout out to Mike Trout, because I'm sure he'll be watching this video. <laughs> yeah. anyway. well, I, I told you, collectors aren't sports fans. They won't have a clue who Mike Trout right. is. But, uh, anyway, I'm right. Barry Smith, and this is Michelle Jackson, and our shop down in Millville is called Smith & Jackson Military Antiques and Firearms. Uh, we're at 21 Peterson Street at the Millville Executive Airport. Come down and see us. Do you have a website? We do. The War Store and More. Yeah, what is war, it? The War Store and More. Dot com, is it? War Store and More. We don't usually do commercials here, but these are <laughs> these are really nice people. and. Uh, if you have relics, You'll sell them to, for the take them to Tom first. <laughs> we'll take his leftovers, believe me. No, 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 no. Well, I have to say, um, it's certainly been a pleasure to have you guys here. Um, you know, Sundays, or I mean, you, you know, you guys all go to Mass, I know. And, yeah. uh, so, you know but it's nice, uh, after Mass, uh, to have some uh, exciting... Yeah. Visitors like this. It's really good and, of you uh, to have us come down here. Really. Well, it's yeah. um, um, or up who, here, I should say. Who can, who yeah. Can, yeah, it's up from Millville. <laughs> but, but who could ask for something more fun of your collector uh, to see all that great stuff? Except for one. There's only one bad piece. I always say there's 
no collection that doesn't have a reproduction. It just That's never right. Goes I out. totally agree with uh, you. There's yeah. always something, and uh, we all make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Mom, you okay? I'm fine. Thank nice you very way much way for uh, standing in with us. Nice uh, how many people have a, a nice lady like this that's willing to put up with all this crap? Right. I deserve a medal. <laughs> I think you do. She was yeah. actually in the Wizard of Oz, I tell people. She was one of the, the munchkins. That's really nice of them. You were a munchkin? <laughs> We are from Lollipop Yeah, wrecked the place, that's right. So, thank you again. Yeah. And, um, thank you. Yeah, and just throw day. that somewhere. And, uh, there. Tom, thanks a lot. Thank you. You're a great and guy. And Ob, yeah. You're not too bad yourself. Mom, thank you, Barry. You're such a nice lady. Thanks for the I like back. you the best. These two are okay. <laughs> you're the best. You're the best. Thanks, thanks Ob. Thanks Bye, for everybody. watching, guys, and we'll see you next video.